Hey guys, Dr. Paul here. In this video, I'm gonna show you one of my most difficult procedures that I've ever done. This patient came in for an examination appointment. We took some x-rays and he had this ceramic onlay on one of his teeth, which is basically a piece of ceramic. It's kind of like a filling, but it's ceramic and it lies on top of the tooth. Lie on, onlay, lay on. Basically, there was a big gap on it and I'll show you the x-ray. So you can see there's this big area on the back of it where it's just not fitting against the tooth. It should be nice and smooth with the tooth, but there's a large step. That step can lead to food getting trapped, that food can lead to decay, which can lead to big, big problems. We can also see that the onlay just, it wasn't fitting that well. Set the patient up and explain, look, we really should be replacing this onlay. The decision that I had during the procedure was, do I replace this onlay to be basically the exact same as what he's got, or do I try and improve it and make it a little bit stronger so it lasts longer? That was the way that I ended up doing it. And how I did that, was basically making sure the onlay covered the whole top of the tooth, kind of like a crown or halfway between a crown and an onlay, so like a crown lay. So my crown lay, basically what I did is I took off the top of the tooth, about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half, took off the whole top of it, which means that the tooth is less likely to break. We're gonna get this lasting a whole lot longer and he won't need to have it replaced because whenever this needs to be replaced, it's gonna be difficult and I don't want the next person to have to go through what I did. So watch along. I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you get some tips from the video. If you are a dentist or a dental student, put some comments, subscribe to the channel, enjoy the video. So we'll get started. Uh, looking at the back of the tooth, you can see where it's dark brown, blackish sort of colors where the decay is. And that's the big problem that we have with this tooth. So we get the bite block in to help the patient stay open for a long period. Then we get the rubber dam into place, floss that down to get it into place. And then we pop a floss tie over the tooth in front. The purpose of the floss tie is to basically keep the rubber dam as apical as possible on the tooth. The other thing that I find that it does, it also helps stop the burr from getting caught in the rubber dam. So I use this quite a bit. Then I get started drilling. So because I know that this likely isn't fitting onto the tooth very well, my idea is that I'm gonna go around the margin on an angle to try to almost get up and underneath it so I can wedge something in like this, Walls Carver, to actually help pull it off. And you can see that it was moving a tiny little bit, um, but I couldn't get it out, so I ended up just doing a tiny bit more drilling, and then it just pops straight off. So as I look underneath, I'm happy to see that the rubber dam has actually kept the margin pretty exposed for me, but I'm not looking forward to removing the decay in that area, it's gonna be quite difficult. Uh, because the onlay wasn't actually fitting on that well, there's quite a bit of excess cement that's still left underneath it. So basically just taking that off first. And also because I made the decision that I was gonna be doing what we call a cusp coverage restoration, which means that I'm gonna be covering these cusps to the outside of the tooth with ceramic, I dropped them down, you can see there. And I do it towards the start, basically it gives me better access to do everything else. So if I know that I'm gonna be dropping down some cusps, I'll do it towards the beginning, because it gives me better access to do the rest of what I need to. So here I'm just cleaning things up, removing some of that cement, and now we're actually working on the distal bit. So where the decay is, we're cleaning that out. And I'm just using a long shank shoulder burr here actually, on an angle with a, a funny mirror position to just kind of get the best access that I can. And it's looking pretty good. Uh, there's still a little bit that I have to do on the lingual margin, but not a huge amount. Now I'm just feeling with an explorer, which basically by feel I can work out if there's still decay there and it's good. Now I made this decision here that I'm also gonna be doing a cusp coverage restoration for the lingual cusps, for the cusps on the inside. I don't want them to break in future. I don't want any risk that this needs replacing because some of these cusps or some tooth structure has actually broken away. So I'm removing the height here of the tooth so I can have my ceramic sitting over the top of it. Now I'm heading towards the mesial portion because I'm gonna make sure that I can break through that contact. It gives me a better fit of my ceramic. But when I look here, to me that looks a little bit suspicious and it looks like I need to remove some because it might be decay. So I cut a piece off of a Toffelmeyer and slide it on between the two teeth there. Just so when I remove that tooth structure, a bit hard to see, but as I remove further towards that tooth in front, I'm not gonna hit the tooth in front. Now you can see here where it's kind of white and chalky. I'm just using my ultrasonic to remove that enamel because it's actually the, the starting process of decay. So that white chalky enamel is that first process of decay. So if I didn't do a full cusp coverage onlay and just did you know, what was exactly there to start with, we may have found that we would have got mesial decay. Now I'm just clearing that out with a burr and the burr that I'm using is actually what we call an end cutting burr. So only the end of the, the burr is actually active. So even if you touch the tooth next door, it's not gonna do anything to it. Um, so I feel much safer using this rather than something that could destroy it. And basically I just go to a point where the decay is gone. Now I'm just cleaning things up with a red band uh, shoulder burr here. 
just smoothing things up and I'm now ready to put my flowable layer on. So I use micro prime first and then some prime and some bond and then we cure that. And then I'm putting a layer of flowable down, just a very thin layer, which is there to help protect the pulp, help protect the dentine, reduce sensitivity. Uh, but it's difficult to play. So you only put a small amount and then I just smooth it around and I kind of shape it around with my explorer and then cure that. And then same thing in the distal section, basically just agitating it just to make sure that it doesn't clump together. And then I'll do the same thing with my explorer and then we cure it. Now comes time to actually finish the preparation. So I'm going around making sure that my margins are beveled and also that the edge of the margin is nice and sharp. So I do it first with a coarse burr. So I do the gross reduction there with a the coarse burr on different angles, going in, making sure that everything is smoothed off because I'm going to be doing this in Serec. The Serec machine likes things smooth. It doesn't like sharp internal angles. So a lot of this is really important that you make things smooth. Then I change it to a red band burr, which is a lot less aggressive. So you can smooth things off nicely. Uh, and then I'm going down into that distal section because I want to make sure that I don't have any resin at the margin. I'm okay with resin being on the apical portion, but I don't want it on the margin. And that was quite difficult to do. So here I'm just assessing what else needs to be done to the prep before we're finished. So here I'm again using my red band burr and I'm doing it without water at about probably two or 3,000 RPM. And this is for a few reasons. One is it's really good for smoothing, but it's also really good for visualizing. So because it does kick up a little bit of dust there, you can see exactly where the burr is touching to know that you are actually getting the areas that you want to be. So if you want a smooth, smooth surface, this is a really good way of doing it. And I'm doing it along that apical margin here on the distal as well to make sure all of the resin is cleared out. I find that when I do this, you can distinguish between resin and tooth structure really, really easily. Now I'm using my ultrasonic and the ultrasonic is to remove any unsupported enamel. Sometimes I find it easier to do it with the ultrasonic than a burr. So I was using it there on that distolingual portion because it's quite difficult to get there. Now again, just going around, feeling everything with my Explorer, making sure it all feels sharp. Anywhere that feels like it could be smoother, then I'll go over that again. Now I'm doing my internal line angles, making sure there's no rough spots there on those different angles, making sure to follow the cusp inclines. That way you're not over reducing. And then I'll come to do the same thing with a yellow band shoulder burr. So the yellow band is a lot less gritty, which means that it's going to smooth things and polish things off really, really nicely. So I always finish things off with this, again, without water. Now, removing the floss tire from the tooth in front, taking off the rubber dam, and then assessing the situation. So the gum is actually growing over the distal margin quite a bit, which is good because I had the rubber dam on, it made my job easier. But here, if I want to get a good capturing of that margin with my 3D scanner, I'm going to need to remove the gum. So I'm using my Thermacut Burr. Hey, super quick, if you're getting something out of the video, please like, share, or subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. All right, back to the video. Which is basically a long shank round burr. It's on a high speed hand piece without water. It's going to remove the, the gum and it's also going to cauterize it slightly. So this is how it looks. You can see I've got a gutter of gum there to expose that margin. Now I'm checking my occlusal clearance and it looks good. And now I'm rubbing Viscostat clear on the area to help stop that bleeding. And then as well, I'll also pack a cotton pellet and I'll leave that there for a couple of minutes. Now it's important when you pack that cotton pellet that you actually rinse it with water because it is acidic. You don't want it to be messing with the gums or the dentine if there's too much of that acid on there. Then I'm using a micro etcher and the micro etcher, you don't have to use it at this point, but I find that when I've got that matte kind of surface, when I actually scan the tooth after it's micro etched, it does a much better job. Now it comes to the scanning. So we scan the arch, top and bottom, and then we do a buckle bite scan so on the side. And I make sure that I go across pretty far to be more confident that it's got enough information to get a good reading of the bite. And so I've just mapped out my margin. I'm just designing the crown here. And then this little block is what the crown is going to be made out of or what the onlay is going to be made out of. So it goes into this machine that cuts that into the piece that it needs to be. So this is how it looks. And we're just trying that in place here. So I'm looking visually, seeing how well it fits, but then as well, also I'll get my probe or my explorer to feel how well that's fitting. And it's hard to see, there's a tiny gap on the mesial. So I suspect that the contact is too tight on that mesial. And then I did confirm that with the floss, which I'm getting my assistant to hold that in place. Then I use some pencil on the tooth in front and the pencil is gonna transfer onto the onlay where the contact is too tight. So you position that in and then when you take it out, 
the area where the contact is hitting against the pencil. So you can just see it there. That's the area that I'm adjusting. I just do a tiny bit here with my red band burr. And then that's feeling really, really good. So feeling good at the front, feeling good at the back. So I'm ready to start making the adjustments I need to to the onlay. So I'm removing the sprue and then I'm doing my occlusal anatomy. So I'm just refining the anatomy a little bit, adding some more bumps and grooves, and then come to polishing. Polishing here with a high speed yellow and then using my dipole twist polishes all the way around down to the creamy color. And that gets it a nice shine before you actually put the glaze on. So you can see the occlusal anatomy then. We put the glaze on, then it goes into the furnace, comes out of the furnace and it's ready to be cemented. So I'm putting the rubber dam back on because I'd love to be able to seat this with rubber dam, but this is gonna be difficult. So I'm trying to get it down as far as I can on the tooth, not that easy, but you see, it's hard to see because it's just out of focus, but the actual rubber dam is sitting over the top of the distal box. So I get some floss behind the rubber dam, and this is a hard one to visualize, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm trying to pull it underneath the rubber dam so it'll pull down that distal root surface, but it's still hanging over the back. So I'm then getting my flat plastic to push that behind the tooth onto the distal of the tooth, hold that in place, and then pulling really, really hard with the floss in a downwards direction to keep that rubber dam in place. Now I'm trying in the crown and it's fitting just as well as it was when we got up to that stage. So I'm now ready to get this tooth ready to be cemented in. So I'm etching around the margins first, wherever there's enamel exposed, and I've got micro prime. And then here I'm getting same technique as before, flat plastic behind the tooth, push the rubber dam out of the way. Then I'm pulling it and then I'll get my assistant to actually hold that in place for me. And it's looking good. I just have to act quickly now. Um, so this is my primer. This is an A and B primer. And then I put Teflon on the tooth in front just so cement doesn't get onto that tooth. And then I load the cement onto the onlay. Difficult to actually get this into position. I probably should have used one of the sticky guys. Uh, push it into position and then hold it with my thumb and then cure it. Cure from the buckle, cure from the lingual, cure from the occlusal. Then remove the Teflon and then it comes to actually remove the excess glue or the excess cement. So I do that with a number 12C blade. And I find this is the easiest thing to do first just to remove the bigger chunks. So going around, getting off any flash, or any excess material. This is a really big chunk, which is actually too big to, to remove. This panavia is really strong stuff, so I actually remove it here with a yellow band uh, burr, remove the majority of it with the high speed, and then come back to it with the scalpel again. It wasn't really working, so then I pulled out my ultrasonic. It's just another kit in the toolbox that I've got. So ultrasonic to go around. I'll do that on the buckle, do it on the link, also do it on the mesial. And this bit here is quite out of focus, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm polishing the junction between the onlay and the tooth to make sure that it's really, really smooth and it's an undetectable margin so it doesn't collect any plaque. Then once I finish this, it comes to taking the rubber dam off, so I'll get the floss out. And then I find that getting rubber dam off, it's actually easier to snip the bits into proximally first and then pull it off rather than it flicking out as you try to get the whole thing off. Um, this is just a little technique that I've got that you can see. It's why I kept it in the video and then take this off. And then I'll go around and feel it again with my Explorer everywhere to make sure there's no excess cement, but I can actually feel some on that distal section. So this bit, I'm just doing it by feel. I'm gonna now be removing with an ultrasonic. So I come with my ultrasonic and it's really, really good way to remove that excess cement. Even if you can't see it, you can do it by feel. Then we check the occlusion and we're actually looking pretty good. I then get him to check and he's like, yep, confirmed it looks good. I check that I've got some contact on the other side and that way I know, yep, it's looking good. Then I'll get him to grind around as well. Again, just to keep checking the excursive movements and it's looking good. And then this is the x-ray. So this is the before. And then as we go to the after, you can see that it's really, really well fitting. I'm happy with this. I had my fingers and toes crossed when we took this x-ray, but you can see the adaptation's great and really great outcome. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. For any dentists or dental students out there, I hope you weren't getting too anxious watching us do the procedure because it was really difficult. Um, because it was a really good friend of mine, it just was that added level of stress for me. But, but I think we did a really great job in the end. He's been really happy with it since. Hope you got some good ideas from it and some good tips. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe. Those things help me out a lot. If you've got any questions, put them in the comment section. Thanks so much and keep on smiling.